Good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Hump Day edition of Hogan's European Outlook. It is Wednesday, it is the 4th, yeah, 4th of September and uh, we are certainly continuing to see some very odd things going on within the African continent. Moisture lifting north into the Sahara Desert, uh, that has been obviously alluded to in, in quite a few videos recently and we're going to see that continuing over the next several days. This is the latest off the GFS indicating this increase in moisture moving north up across a large swathe of particularly the western side of the Sahara as you can see here but that is certainly a, a very very unusual event taking place. Now one of the reasons I personally think this could be happening is not just the, the warm Mediterranean the warm North Atlantic but also the mean ridge of high pressure the subtropical high I think is getting forced further and further north and it's essentially lifting the tropical convergence zone northwards as well that is my kind of thinking in terms of a very simplistic way of looking at it i know it's a lot more complex than that and it's something i think that will be looked at in quite a bit of detail um, possibly by myself but also there will be uh, researchers out there doing their study with regards to what is going on here but it's certainly distorting the hurricane season we just don't have the right atmosphere to essentially do what it normally would do at this time of the year we're rapidly approaching the 11th 10th 11th of september is the climatological peak of the hurricane season but we've got a heck of a long way to go yet and uh, you know we really cannot rule out the rest of the season based on what we've seen so far in essence, some of the big numbers, 25, 30 name storms, I think we would be very hard pressed to get there, I must admit. But you can see here, this is the latest uh, satellite imagery showing the convection blowing up over parts of northeastern Iberia across the Balearics. I believe there was some tornado reports around the uh, Majorca area in the last 24 hours or so we had some uh, tornado tornadic activity over southern portions of italy as well and we're generally high and dry across the majority of the uk albeit we're somewhat cloudy and um, it isn't too bad at the moment we've got an area of low pressure that is becoming more and more cut off divorced from the main jet that's going to get forced south as heights build over the northern uk over northern europe here you're forcing that low to cut off and then become trapped within itself here with nothing to steer along. But you can see also the thunderstorms blowing up over the spine of the Atlas Mountains, extending from uh, Morocco through Algeria into Tunisia, and even into northwestern Al uh, Libya as well. We're seeing these uh, showers and thunderstorms developing here. This is a big story, folks, and we will be continuing to keep an eye on this going forward here. I wanted to very briefly um, talk about the, uh, the the what's going on actually. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm actually writing quite a detailed article at the moment with regards to the past winter. So last winter in connection with the summer and also then linking last winter this summer with potentially what's coming up as we progress through deeper into autumn and into the winter season coming up. Now, we are beginning to see the, the La Nina, cooling waters, the La Nina, begin to start to reflect the atmospheric state. Up until now, it's been essentially an El Nino-based state. Despite the cooling and the kind of stalled-out nature of the cooling over the eastern equatorial Pacific, I think that was due to a very, very El Nino-esque type pattern, especially during mid to late summer. We've seen a stronger jet. We've seen, um, you know, a very El Nino-like hurricane season so far as well. By the way, a lot of wind shear. Uh, somebody asked me in the comment section below in yesterday's video, what is shear? It's essentially a difference in wind speed and direction with height up through the atmosphere. Essentially, that disrupts thunderstorms and building thunderstorms. What you want to have is low wind shear, so these uh, columns of rising air can then uh, have no uh, no effects from out with. But if you've got winds blowing at different speeds in different directions, that disrupts the rising motion within the atmosphere, essentially. And what El Nino does is it increases the wind shear over the Atlantic Basin, and that is essentially what we're seeing. 
other aspects that are causing issues as well. But while we've seen the ASOI crash and even lower during the month of July, probably um, the reason behind the stolen of the, the building La Nina, we've seen an increase in easterly trades. We've also seen an increase in cooling of the eastern equatorial Pacific. And now we're beginning to see an increase in the SOI from negative, which reflects El Nino, to more positive, which reflects La Nina. And what I think is starting to take place here, and I could be mistaken, I tweeted this out yesterday, that perhaps the El Nino-like atmospheric state helped drive this past summer as well as the second half of the winter. And this is going to be talked about in a bit more detail, I think, in the coming videos, so stay tuned. It is a wee bit heavy going if you don't understand what I'm talking about, but I'm trying to learn the mistakes that were made before to then create a better accuracy rate going forward. Now, the summer's been good. The first half of winter was okay, but I think the first half of winter, active late season hurricane season, we had the man and oscillation rotating through the warm phases, promoted the warm spells. Then we've seen it going into the phases of 6, 7, 8, and 1. That promoted blocking cold spells for the autumn and also into the early winter season. The atmosphere was still in a, a, in a La Nina base state back then. But then we started to see the atmosphere respond to the, the warming waters of the East Pacific. Then I think it over took the pattern. You know, essentially the SSWs that were seen repeatedly during last winter and the MJO essentially were knocked out of the playing field because the El Nino overwhelmed the pattern. Then I think there was a bit of a demise of the El Nino effect during the first half of this summer season. We've seen uh, also a, a quick hurricane season, for example. Then we've seen it, it drop off. Increased hostility within the tropical Atlantic. Also, the Westleys became stronger during the second half of uh, July, and particularly so during the month of August. It looked as if the the SOI crashed during that period of time. It may or may not be a coincidence. But then we're starting to see the SOI now moving more firmly into a La Nina-like signal. And what is interesting, it may or may not be a coincidence, but we're seeing the pattern begin to become more blocky. As you slow the westerlies down over the Northern Hemisphere, bear in mind that we're seeing the polar vortex begin to show its hand over the pole as the you know the cold builds over the northern hemisphere high latitudes but we're allowing the slowdown of the westerlies possibly a byproduct of the soi going into firm positive territory now the cooling the, the east equatorial pacific but we're seeing warmer air getting lifted north up into the high latitudes and that is going to send the arctic oscillation and north atlantic oscillation into at least weak negative territory and by doing so it is going to allow colder air to drop in to both north america and to western europe notice here that as we move towards the week two period which is the 11th through the 18th of september so the middle portions of the month we're seeing blocking become more established further north along with this main core of high pressure this is off the cfsv2 you notice here it's extending over Greenland up into the Arctic region. We've got a trough, a northerly flow based on the, the uh, upper heights, you know, positive versus negative here. We're going to see colder air getting drawn out of the Arctic into the UK and Ireland towards the middle portions of this month. Now, I'm not hyping this up and building it into anything that it isn't, uh, you know, it is a, a taste of autumn is probably the best way to describe it. But I'm looking at the big picture. This is a classic big picture uh, look at all this. Is this the first indications of La Nina taking over the global atmosphere? Also, the tropics are likely to start getting going. We're likely to start easing the wind shear over the main development region of the tropical Atlantic. We're likely to start to see more systems developing. And the question mark will be, like we've seen last year, are we going to see these systems moving out of the tropics into the temperate region here? And if it does, may start to buckle the jet more. Negative NAOs, negative AOs, 
dislodge of cold out of the pole towards the middle attitudes, etc, etc. So this is me starting to set the tone, looking at last winter, looking at the summer, to then forecast what's going on down the road here. So this is me learning and talking to you in real time what I'm seeing. Uh, I know it's probably a little bit, you know, long-winded. Uh, you're just wanting maybe know what the weather's going to do over the next few days. I get that. But this is the goal here in the channel, to try and look at the big, broad picture here. Let's have a look and see what the, the models are indicating here then. So we'll go back to the North Atlantic view. Uh, and we're really going to have to keep an eye on the, on the tropics, I think, uh, during the second half of September on into the the, the um, month of October and November as well here, what happens within the tropics could have major implications on our pattern. But uh, if we look back here, let's go back to the, the overview chart here. Uh, let's actually show you the stratosphere and uh, the, the polar vortex. So this is the current 10 HP. You can see a very slight green showing up here, a little bit hard to see. But that slight faint green is an indication of a cool pool starting to develop, particularly so to the east of, uh, of Greenland over towards Scandinavia, which is quite interesting. There is indications, by the way, that the PV may be weak during the month of uh, uh, the, the, the autumn season. And we'll, we'll look at that uh, in a little bit more detail, hopefully on Friday. But if you notice here, if we skip out a week from now here at 10 HPA, you can see that green becoming a little bit more congregating over the, the pole. But then if we skip right the way out to 360 hours from now, you can actually see at 10 millibars a little L showing up. That is low pressure at 10 millibars indicating that the winds within the polar vortex are beginning to accelerate and it's starting to form an area of low pressure. That is your polar vortex coming alive once again for the season and all we'll see going forward is this change from green to light blue to dark blue and we'll wa watch and see uh, with regards to the behavior of the stratospheric polar vortex how weak does it get how strong does it get remember we've got a west qbo as well which can accelerate the strength of the jet but what we've seen down in the southern hemisphere be interesting to see if there's a connection to a, a harbinger of a possible ssw up across the north of the uh, the planet during the upcoming winter season. We'll wait and see what happens. But if we play through this loop here, you can see we've got this easterly flow. By the way, Western Scotland, by the time we reach Friday, with the fern effect, we may see 25, possibly 26 Celsius. Could be one of the warmest days of the year, believe it or not, in Western Scotland. Low pressure to the south, high pressure to the north here, easterly flow, but we're also on that boundary between the high to the north and the low to the south, which means we're going to see thundery outbreaks of rain, uh, fairly widespread actually across southern England, south Wales, southwestern uh, portions of the UK in general, generally high and dry, a lot of cloud cover blown over relatively cool waters of the North Sea, but the further west you go over northern England and Scotland, the sunnier it will be and the more chance you will see the temperatures responding very nicely indeed. So as we continue to play, you can see here that boundary there sitting across the south of the UK. So we're going to see the, the rainfall totals uh, mount up over the next few days here. And then as we move towards the, the, the middle and second half of the weekend, an area of low pressure kind of develops in that general high pressure dominated field. If you notice here, then as we move towards the middle portions of the month here, we'll watch and see what happens. Quite a messy looking picture here. Uh, going forward let's have a look at the 850s here because this is some fairly warm air getting drawn in from the east here and that may allow the temperatures to respond that is actually quite a warm air mass to say the least here moving in from the east and even encompassing more northern areas this is probably the warmest 850s of the entire year across the northern half of the uk by the way notice slightly cooler air down closer to the low pressure to the south here playing right the way through this loop We've got the cooler in place at the moment, then replaced by warmer air from the east. Then as we continue to play through, relatively mild air to the north, cooler air to the south, then that area of low pressure, then drifts its way northwards through the course of the weekend. And then as we go towards next week, then there is indications of a discharge of some early season Arctic air moving southwards through the middle portions of this month. So we'll watch this space 
Looking real quick at the rainfall over the next uh, few days here, let's look specifically at the UK and see total accumulated precipitation here. And looking between now and the end of Saturday, some fairly sizable totals, by the way, 20, 40 millimetres of rain across the south coast here, slightly lesser as you move up towards South Wales and the South Midlands here, literally bone dry across the north, very wet the further south you go here. And essentially, this is the opposite of what we've seen during the month of August. High and dry across the southeast, very, very wet, record wet, in fact, across the northwest. So that's quite an interesting look by the, the, the GFS here. Let's look at the um, precipitation anomalies. Let's look actually uh, real quick at the CFSV2 before I close off because I'm actually running a, a little bit late. Uh, so rainfall wise, upcoming seven days, wet south, dry across the north here, and it will be particularly wet across parts of Europe. If you notice here, temperature anomaly wise, actually cooler slightly across the south, especially in northern Iberia, southwestern France, warm across the majority of the UK here. Into week two, we've got the cool run, running in. As the heights build, the AO, NAO goes negative, and we've got the building of the pressure across the Atlantic up into Greenland here. We've got the cooler air moving south here. So an interesting situation. Does this happen? That is the big question initially. Then we see the potential of repeating patterns going through the autumn and into the early winter season. That is what we've seen last year. MJO ro rotating through both the warm phases and the cool phases. We've seen the response in the atmosphere. Then uh, what I started to see was a pattern uh, kind of repetition. We're seeing the potential of the cold spell during the middle portions of September. It will probably go away. Then it may return. And then is this kind of something that we're going to start to see repeating going forward here that essentially i hope that makes sense but that essentially is what i'm looking at here and i'm doing it a detailed write-up at the moment that i'm hoping to have released on friday if i can get the time to, to, to finish this going to also look at the teleconnections where we're at at the moment where we expect them to potentially go going forward it will be the first winter update of the season so stick around like Share it with your friends and family and hit that subscribe button if uh, if you wish to. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Bye for now.